All right, guys, here we have a 2000 Club Car DS Gas. This one here is experiencing the run and then shuts down and we can't figure out why symptom. Actually fairly common and sometimes a little bit difficult to diagnose. Uh, it has a very weak spark and the ignition coil I believe is failing, but what it'll do is it'll run good for a little while. What I had originally thought was a dirty carburetor, which was part of the issue. Uh, also, it had it, this cart had multiple issues to begin with right out of the gate. The, it had a blocked air filter. It was, the, the filter was so wet and full of mold, uh, mold and mildew that it was choking the motor. I pulled the carburetor off, cleaned it, put it back together. It was running even better. I flushed the tank, put new gas in. It's running even better yet, new spark plug adjusted the valves and bypassed uh, the rev limiter to determine what the, the cause of this problem is. But here, I'll give you what the symptom is first and then I'll explain how to diagnose this. Also a weak battery. Not the rev limiter. I've bypassed the rev limiter, took it out of the system completely electrically, and it still did the same symptoms, which is this. And believe it or not, this was one of the symptoms that it was experiencing. As soon as I started the engine up, it would do that, like not even 30 seconds into running. So it barely was able to load it on the trailer by driving it. I had to winch it up on the trailer. So that told me, okay, at first I diagnosed it as a blocked carburetor. Second, I diagnosed it as potentially a blocked air filter or intake system because it was exhibiting the same symptoms as holding the choke down too long it's like it was getting flooded and now if i try to start it it just won't run it'll just keep doing that but after it sits for a few hours it will run just fine until the coil fails again and because the igniter and the ignition coil are one unit you have to replace it as a unit and unfortunately to get to it the proper way you have to loosen the four motor bolts that hold the engine to the subframe. You have to loosen the two bolts that hold the motor to the rear differential. And you don't have to take the motor out of the cart to do it, but to gain access to the two 10 millimeter bolts that are on the bottom of the blower housing and to get the blower housing pulled out away far enough from the motor to gain access to the ignition coil, it's just so much easier to just to take out those six bolts, basically slide the motor forward and lift it up and prop it up so you can take the blower cover off. Take the ignition coil off it's just one wire and two 10 millimeter or eight millimeter bolts and that's it that's all there is to it some guys will cut out this little piece here and you know I, I think that just looks like hell when you do that when you when you bastardize the cart just to get a part out if it's your own cart that's fine but i'm never going to do that to a customer's cart it's the next day the engine's nice and cool so now we'll be able to start taking things apart and getting it all disassembled and ready to pull this blower cover off but here's the uh, bolts i was telling you about you got to remove these four bolts here and there's nuts on the top of them that hold the motor down and then on the back of the cart you want to remove the middle bolt that's the one that has the studs that come off of the engine that hold it to the rear of the cart so you remove those you'll be able to lift the engine out without really taking anything else off uh, the other side it's generally easier to get to that nut if you remove the clutch there are two different size nuts and bolts here the 916 nut is on the top and the half inch bolt. And I'm talking about the head size, not the, the thread shaft diameter. I'm gonna cheat and use my little impact, make it go a little quicker.
And this would basically be the same procedure if you were removing the engine from the cart. Ooh. Wow. And there's nothing fancy about these. These are just 9 16 nuts on the back here. I'm up behind the engine removing. The last one is right here, up in the back, right here where my, my fingers are. And it's easier to take the belt off and the clutch than it is to try to fight and get that out of there. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can do to make it easier on yourself, but when I'm trying to show you how to do it in a video. All right, so we're gonna take the clutch off. So the key is off. It's also in service mode, so there's no way. There we go. These clutches usually come off fairly easily. Just a short bolt. Doesn't matter which way the belt rotates off, you just gotta get it off the clutch so you can. There. That's it. Okay. Just slip right off. How much more room you have to work? Alright, so we took the tire off, the bolt is right here, and the nut we have to get to. For some reason, it is just very difficult. There we go. And sometimes you have to resort to taking things apart you don't want to, but it does make the job that much easier and go that much faster. You can see there. All right, so basically now the engine is free and we can slide it forward. All right, so now that we have the motor unbolted, and we have the exhaust strap disconnected, so you gotta be sure you remove that exhaust strap. It's basically just like a stainless steel hose clamp that holds the exhaust to a bracket. You gotta make sure you remove all that. And now, with some gentle force, you can slide the engine forward. And what we have to do is we gotta prop this side of the engine up. And that'll give us the clearance we need in order to access all of those 10 millimeter bolts. Disconnect that. Now on the ignition coil side of it, you're gonna need to save the boot. You're also going to need to save this dome cover. This is basically like a weatherproof cover, this thing here. Save this sleeve. This is basically an anti-chafe sleeve. Okay, you can see how... Now I can spin that out by hand. That's not even catching any threads. But we'll put it back in because it's there. Break this one loose. Should be nothing else that we need to remove okay see that one is just not coming apart easily there's one underneath the, this one you don't have to take this one out you just need to back it out the studs actually the only ones you need to take out are the ones that are that go in this way these ones that are surface mounted like this you just have to loosen them up same goes for this one under here is that one under there where am i at here oh it's back a little further Like this was designed very well. This one's just a little tricky to get to. So another thing engineers do is design this stuff with stuff in the way. So you got to take other stuff off to get to the stuff you're trying to fix because I don't know why. I have no clue why. Down behind the carburetor, there's a 10 millimeter bolt you have to completely remove. At least I have to remove it on this one because it's... I don't know if it's connected properly or if it's in, anything was put back together in the right order. It's going to be a little difficult for me to show you this. Just due to the pure nature of it. But what you got to do is you got to get underneath the engine somehow with something... Like this. You're gonna put either one of them in. Whoever did this the last time didn't do it right. 
and they didn't return the two there's two 10 millimeter bolts one here and one here on the bottom of the blower housing that you're supposed to reinstall and they didn't so they're not there but there's one up here behind the oil filter we have to get out we have to completely remove this one this is what we call half-assing not doing it correctly or completely I should say I guess the correct way really would be just as long as the end result is the engine runs but whoever did this last time did not completely restore everything they probably figured once I get those bolts out screw it they're not going to help I'm not putting them back just based on that little bit of movement there we have the blower housing free so basically what I'll do is take a screwdriver or a long something and prop it up underneath the bottom of the engine and this will keep the engine from falling while I'm working underneath it and it'll keep it up now this keeps the blower housing nice and free so now we can go topside all right so here's the flywheel and blower here's our ignition coil we just unplugged this is basically our ground this is what comes from it runs through the grommet holes and every and openings on the motor it goes down to the rpm limiter or the rev limiter and when the rev limiter is engaged it disables the ignition coil it basically sends it to ground and then when the rpms drop it enables the ignition coil and opens ground so it can run and that's why if you get that that's what that is um, so now we can go ahead and remove this ignition coil and I believe these are eight millimeter eight mil I'll show you how I set my oh they're not yes they are eight mil my big hands are in the way crack these loose Okay, get the lower one out first. Just using the socket to get a better grip on this bolt here. But this has the this is the part that failed. And here is the new part. It's basically exactly the same thing. So what I'm doing is basically just getting these bolts started. This is the new one going in. Because right as it is, when you tighten them down, they do touch the flywheel, so you have to set their gap. And this is not as critical as, say, adjusting valves. See, the blower cover's got my gloves all ripped. Just get them touching. See, it's. You can hear it rubbing. There's actually, there's really no adjustment for this. So, even if you hold the coil as high as you can above. flywheel as long as you have no rubbing you're good there's really not a lot of a lot of room for adjustment on this so once you get it close snug her down and then plug in your ground Okay, and now you're ready to start putting everything back together, which is, that's basically it. So now you take your long cable here, make sure you orient your grommet in the correct direction. See, now I know I'm doing it properly, because I dropped it. Okay, so it goes on like this, put the... like 
that. And then you feed your cable through. And then I just start bringing it in. I typically do like to leave some slack. Not inside, but once we get it close enough here, the lower will slip right back into place. Okay. So now I will attempt to slide this cover back on, which this could be tricky in itself. nuts out or bolts out a little bit and then push the ignition cable out of the way and that's that's pretty much all there is to it since there's only like two bolts I have to return because the guy that worked on it last time didn't do it right didn't put the other ones in and I don't have any to put in its place so it is what it is folks all right so now once you get the blower cover back on uh, we're gonna set the wiring up here first before we go back and mount the motor back in its place. Uh, I put the anti-chafe sleeve back on. Go ahead and trim your wire. All right, so what I'll do to determine the length I want is I will leave a little bit of slack. I'll plug the cap into the spark plug and then I'll just pick a random right there. And now this is when you can see how you have the copper core. Now I'll install this boot, the weather boot. So just a little bit, remove the spark plug cap, the plug, and then you can see inside there is threads. So you want to thread that screw right up the center. Let's see if we can move this out of the way. Thread that screw right up the center of the wire. Push towards the wire while you're rotating until the threads catch. And then I'll make sure it's nice and firm. Once you feel a little bit of resistance, then give it the final turn. And then slide this boot over the end of that plug. And then plug it into the spark plug. And that end of your installation is complete. Now we can slide the motor back and get it mounted. And it should go back fairly smoothly. Typically what I like to do first when reinstalling the engine back into the engine bay here or on the subframe is I will put the four bolts in the bottom of the engine, but I won't tighten them up. I'll just get them close and then I'll put the two nuts on the rear of the motor and then I'll use them to snug the motor to the back and then I will tighten the lower subframe bolts up so that way I know that the engine is at least in the general vicinity of where it should be. And then we can put the clutch back on the belt and start it up and see how it runs. All right, so now we got everything buttoned up and back together. The only thing I don't have together yet is the carburetor stuff, which we can do that real quick. That's not all that difficult to do. Now that we got the motors mounted, let's see what happens. Okay, so we're gonna put it into, see I have the, the stopper out, so no matter where the, sw the shifter is, there's no position that it will run. Oh, we also installed and mounted, tightened up the clutch as well. One thing to note with that, make sure you don't lose the keyway, otherwise you're gonna be hunting and putting a new keyway in it. All right, so we're gonna do this in service mode in neutral. RPM limiter or rev limiter is also connected as well, so we don't have to worry about that. The ignition system and electrical system is properly wired. Since I really didn't feel like sitting here with the golf cart with my foot on the pedal, I'm gonna use a very specialized tool to keep the pedal engaged. And we only need to give it about half throttle. All right, so I won't bore you with the full 25 minutes that I let it run here, because, you know, that's just kind of boring just listening to an engine run. But it does work. It runs good. It starts right up every time. Well, except for the battery. So we know that the spark plug, or the ignition coil, rather, was the issue. We got that resolved, and customer will be happy until I give them the bill. <laughs> 
anyway guys that is going to wrap this one up i just have to button up a few things but uh, other than that this cart is done if you have any questions leave them down in the comment section below be sure to check the video's description for links to products i use every day to bring you these videos and to run my business be sure to check my patreon page facebook page web page there's really not a lot going on on patreon at the moment i'm still kind of playing around with that but i appreciate it anyway thanks for watching all right guys until next time we will see you in the next video